Welcome to the Fangled Cast, brought to you by Fangled Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Fangled Cast. Today, I've got Sue Nordman with us, and she is the CEO of Obsidian, which is an industrial company that I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about. And the reason I'm having her on is this is part of this series where we're talking to CEOs about how they view in the industrial manufacturing space, how they view the role of marketing within their organization, and also how they view outside resources when they, they have opportunities that they think would bring an outside marketing resource in for their help. Before we go any further, and before I screw up her bio, let me introduce <laughs> everyone to Sue. Tell us, tell us who you are, Sue, what you do. Tell us about Obsidian. Um, I'm Sue Nordman, and my company is Obsidian Manufacturing Industries, and we own several brands of machine tools and machinery, and we also provide surface grinding. Um, our brands are, were well established in their markets before we acquired them. Um, we have Magnalock USA, which is work holding, and we have two lift magnet lines, Magnalift and Magnetic Power Grip. And then we also have rotary surface grinders, Arter Precision Grinding Machines, which is over a hundred years old. I promise, I promise not to make any jokes about magnetic personalities. I'll, I'll just- <laughs> Sounds we'll, good. We'll, we'll leave that for the amateurs. <laughs> we get a lot of that. We manufacture new and repair old. And like I said, we also um, provide surface grinding with four Matson grinders and an Arter in our shop. And that was our last acquisition in April of 2019. I, I Just coming from an industrial background, I find that really interesting that not only do you make the equipment, but you're also a place that that, that uses the equipment that you make. Yeah, so, everything that we manufacture, um, we use within our facility to manufacture those products or to provide the services that we we sell. So it's really interesting. And, and one of the reasons I had you on and I, I, you know, I joked with you before, you know, not, not to sound too transparent, but I'm always fascinated when I meet people in, in a specific industry that isn't the, the, the stereotype. And typically in these heavy, you know, industry areas, you know, I don't come across that many female CEOs. So I'm really curious to know where, how you got here and also how, you know, what, what do you think is the advantage or disadvantage of, of having a woman running a, a, a hard industrial company? Um, well, I'm sitting in the seat I'm in today because of my husband and my father. Um, my dad worked um, in the, the manufacturing industry for most of his life. Um, he worked at Matson Machine Works in Rockford and helped build the grinders. And actually when we purchased our grinders, we discovered in the documents that we were given with the grinder, that he actually did the inspection report when it shipped out of the factory, our largest 84 inch grinder. So that's kind of a neat thing. Um, I knew when I saw that, that I was probably on the right track, that I was sitting where I should be. It was just kind of one of those moments that you realize, wow, how this has all come together. Um, but my husband worked for him, he started out as a machinist in the eighties. Um, I stayed, I was in accounting, but then I stayed home with our kids and raised them. And when my husband bought the first brand that he bought um, in 2007, I helped him. I was his support. I carried around a laptop here and there and everywhere and worked at nights and still was available for my kids, but still helped with the business. And then when our last child um, left high school for college, uh, we decided to make a change he had had enough of trying to do everything and be mm -hmm. there more than full-time. So I started full-time and beyond, of course, because once you, once you take an interest in things, it's, it's always more than, than 40 hours a week. But um, I took on all the administrative, the business, the handling of all that. And not soon after that, we purchased the Ardor, um, Ardor grinding machines and I guess backing up in 2010, my husband had purchased the lift magnets. So we just kept adding. Uh, we needed to move from the facility we were in. So this building became available and the grinding business had just went out of business. So mm -hmm. the grinders were available and it was easy, an easy switch and it all blends together. So 
Um, as far as being stereotyped, I do get a little bit of that, um, but I, I probably get more people that want to hear my story and hear what it's, it's all about. Um, I've been told I bring a different element to the table in planning meetings and uh, I just have a different viewpoint. And I don't know if that's because I'm a female or just my personality. Yeah, it's, it's always fascinating to me. I, I wonder, because I've, I've been in, in work environments where I've had uh, female colleagues and female bosses. And I've also had situations where, you know, where, where the, the staff that reported me was, was multi-gendered also. Uh -huh. um, and I just, I, I always wonder what the experience is like when, when you have to deal with somebody who doesn't really want to respect the fact that you're a CEO, if that happens, because you're female. Does, does that occur? Yeah. Oh yeah, that does occur. Um, and I, I'm not one to raise a fuss about it, but I will mm -hmm. stand my ground. Um, and I think I've learned that in all aspects of my life. I, you know, let's go back and talk about um, getting your car serviced. Absolutely. You know, as a mom and I'd have my little kids with me and, you know, they would just try to take advantage of me. And I actually had a, a, a turning point with that. I couldn't believe it actually happened in my own home, but someone was a repairman was there repairing my dryer. And I had my husband on my phone and I said, you know, he, he says we need this new belt. And um, the guy said, well, you really do need it now. And he took it and he broke it oh. right in front of my eyes. And I was just like, you're totally walking all over me. So I've learned yeah. before I ever got in the seat. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. I look at people post every once in a while, you'll see someone post on, on like LinkedIn, they'll have a picture and it'll say uh, female CEO of so-and-so. And then they draw a line through the female. They say, no, I'm the CEO of. Yeah, exactly. Or, or if they're a minority, uh, Asian CEO, uh, they cross right. that out. Because at the end yeah. of the day, it's it's the performance and the accomplishments of of the person, right? But, you know, we all we all have our our sort of sort of barriers. I always it's always fascinating to me to hear about sort of the struggles when somebody doesn't follow the the quote uh, uh, normal path Norm. to, yeah. to the leadership. Exactly. And, and, and now that I've, I've known you for a short time, but we've had several conversations, and there's no doubt in my mind who's the CEO of your company. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, thank you. It's good. It's, it's clear. It's clear. I'm well, glad I've established that. <laughs> oh, immediately. immediately. Uh, if, you, if you hadn't, I wouldn't have had you on the, on the, <laughs> yeah. on the edge. Yeah, a little the secret podcast. there, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's let's go find someone real dopey and interview mm -hmm. them and, and, make them, make, and make them look bad. That's, that's, yeah. the, that's the goal. No, um, so let, let's talk a little bit about, about marketing in the B2B space and how, how it's viewed in, in your organization. What, tell me about what your internal marketing functions are and what kind of what kind of results and accomplishments you expect from that team. Well, in the last uh, year, couple years, probably, I guess time's getting away from me. We've really jumped on the digital marketing and social media. Um, and then, you know, the pandemic hit, which just I feel that industry has really surged. Um, uh, so there's a lot of. LinkedIn is a good source for um, mm -hmm. for sales marketing in the business world, I think. And I think it's evolving. I think it's going to be even more um, important in the, the years to come. I just watched a webinar or attended a webinar and um, they had said that, it, you know, LinkedIn is shifting from um, being a job search social media to a sales or sales and marketing. <laughs> Yeah, I was really, I think in the first year or two years that LinkedIn existed, it was very sales oriented at that time. And, and then it sort of went away. So when you first signed up for it, it was, you, you had your network of people that you worked with and, and used it to say, hey, Sue, you know, Jim at this company, can you introduce me? And that was exactly. really sort of sort of how it began was right. making those networking connections. And now it's morphed off into all sorts of um, there's people who wish it was Facebook. I think that they're they're tired of all the all the, the, yeah. the petty petty stuff on Facebook. So now they're coming to LinkedIn and, and that's what it, I'm afraid of. Yeah, and bringing it with them. But if I, I, I think with a with a proper proper strategy and really focusing on the brand, uh, you you still with LinkedIn can really make great. That's how how we met. Exactly. It was exactly it was a professional professional conversation that that led to me wanting wanting to have you on the on the show. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to the core of, of marketing in your organization, do, do you in your team sit down and really look at what is the 
core strategy of the company to then choose those modalities or are you kind of kind of doing them both at the same time uh, we're doing a lot of uh, at the same time <laughs> i i kind of feel like um we have so much to market and um with the different brands and the different angles and the variety of products magnalock is a huge huge product line um you know from vacuum to electromagnetics to repairs it's just um there's a lot of different facets and <laughs> ways we can go with that um so they all kind of go together but yet they all have their own identity mm -hmm. so there's a lot to it it's, it's still evolving in my opinion i some of the brand usually when you buy a brand that's old um someone's kind of done with it they're they're passing it on they've they've mm -hmm. gotten out of it what they wanted and it their time to let it go and so a lot of the information we were given um that has passed on we have to develop it all over again because sure. it's just not modernized and and ready to deal with the marketing world that is of today. So. Is there is there a clear message that, that you've created internally based on the benefits of that product that separate it from all of the alternatives for the same like other other magnetic or other types of of holding materials that that you know I'm I'm out looking for 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 that that type of an industrial application. I need to hold materials. Um, if if I looked at yours, is there something about your company that would make me go, oh yeah, that's the one I've got to do business with? Uh, well, I always like to hit home that we're family owned and we're personable. Mm -hmm. um, we're not, uh, our, a lot of the brands of work holding, like I said, have been established for years, like OS Walker was actually the, the grandfather of, you know, um, electromagnetics and so they've all been around for a long time passed through different companies sure. different yeah. hands but we're not like a, an investment company we're not just hanging on to these and going to pass them on type mm -hmm. things um so i think we're more personable and like i said family oriented that's that's one of the big things that we like to play up sure. that and our products go all together we we use what we sell so Mm -hmm. um you know we a lot of problems our customers encounter with their magnetics same same things going on with us or here's what we do when we have that problem or here's what we have done to solve that problem so really if, if i was doing research for you and i reached out to your top customers probably the first thing they would say back to me is we use these guys because we we feel like they're human we know yes, them exactly and 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 on top of that if i call they actually answer the phone yes and then maybe the next is well we, we i will close. say we have voicemail but we do yeah. answer the phone <laughs> I, I i meant it metaphorically but you know it, exactly. it's interesting we, we've done projects in the past where where a product was a true commodity which your your, your equipment is not it, it's it it's a unique but in right. the packaging industry four different companies yeah. make a plastic bucket exactly and they're, and they're identical except one has never been late in delivery. One can meet scheduling when other people can't. Yeah. One, if there's a problem, they 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 don't make you work to get. Mm -hmm. it. So that personal touch is a huge value that separates uh, players in that B two B industrial space. Right. <clears throat> even even like the Fastenal model for for parts, mm -hmm. they, they they put a, a vending machine with screws in your factory. And even right. though they're charging you more for the screws, they're responsible for making sure they're always there. So when you grab them out of the vending machine, you get charged for them. Exactly. And, and by never shutting down the plant because you're missing a screw, that's a huge value. Exactly. So yep. yeah, that's that's interesting. When when do you think industrial companies like yourself recognize a need to go outside and look for outside marketing sources? Oh, um, well, I think when you feel overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would be interested in outsourcing certain things in marketing if the opportunity arose. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I so much of things that people ask me are so dependent on when the pandemic's going to end, when things are going to turn around. I mean, sure. yeah, in the last couple of weeks, things have started to pick up in manufacturing again in the United States, but you know, you, you're hindered on your budgets and your, you know, just your capabilities right now because of all the problems with the pandemic the yeah. supply chain the availability of steel 
yeah. this can go on and on. <laughs> yeah, there's the steel situation. This that's a whole other mm -hmm. podcast. I've, I've exactly. Had that, I've had exactly. that. I've had that conversation <laughs> a dozen times in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, steel yeah. in, in particular. And the reason I ask, like for example, if if your company were to decide, you know what, we want to consolidate and have one, say, super powered website, is that something that you would try to handle internally, or would you hire separate companies, one to do the copywriting, the photo, or or would you look to say an agency? I probably, or, uh, I'd probably go with an agency that serviced all of it. Yeah, that would be one major website, be just because of Magnalox products. There's so many of them. Mm -hmm. um and the ardor the ardor grinders there's so much history there because the websites that we have now are not fully done i mean mm -hmm. they they appear done but they have a lot more <laughs> to add and we're in the process of doing it like i said um the lift magnets never had a website wow until we purchased it in 2010 which by 2010 you'd think it probably would have had something but no um, so all of that, all that type of marketing, it was never established. So we have nothing to go on, which is good in a way. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have the right historical documents, we can't, some of the things, I mean, there's still probably a few models of lift magnets we've never made wow. that we have the engineering for and everything that we could make. No one's just ever ordered them. So, yeah, you know, in the, the B2B space, especially the industrial sector of it has been the slowest to digitize mm -hmm. and, and come up with it. I've seen recently, also in, in the old the old style chemical companies, literally mm. the websites look like somebody made them in Word. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and threw in some graphics and published the Word page. Exactly. Um, and and you know, if you look at the evolution of of B two B marketing, when when I was young, B two B marketing was sell sheets and trade shows. Exactly. There was no yes. no one knew no one knew what a value proposition was. You would sell based on the features of your product, not on the true benefit. Why, mm -hmm. why would someone buy your equipment over somebody else? We're here in the US. If there's a problem, we can fix it. If it's overseas, you don't know who to talk to. Exactly. Uh, how much is downtime worth to you? We have the lowest downtime in the, in the industry. There's all of these benefit things that are now part of that conversation where it used to be this many volts, this much horsepower, yeah. this much torque, our shaft exactly. is this, this big. Uh, you know, we, we use hardened steel. And, and at the end of the day, it was it was just a whole list of, sales features, not right. what's there. Yeah. And that's why, you know, for, for us, the B2B market has been so so fruitful as a marketing consultancy, because so mm -hmm. many of the people who've been embedded in that industry aren't, aren't aware that there's an option. Right. It's, it's, yes. It's, it's, it's fascinating. We've had a couple other companies, uh, fellow, like uh, not competitors, but other businesses and manufacturing say, you know, how do you do all that marketing? And I guess I have to have a young mindset. I have three children okay. that are adults now, of course, but um, you know, they, the whole digital marketing for me evolved from my personal social media accounts. I'm like, why couldn't we do that? That type sure. of thing. And then as far as marketing with our um, surface grinding, we actually, and up until when the pandemic hit, we were going door to door. We'd have mm -hmm. a day that our salesmen would head out. They'd pick a zip code in the nearby area and they'd be visiting people. And you can't believe the response, the positive response we got from that. There was a lot of people that were happy to see them out, put a face with mm -hmm. our company and be happy and very pleased um, to see us out. Like I said, we take candy and goodies and stickers and <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. One of the my my favorite story of of the door to door industrial, I I was really busy, and someone left me a note at the at the front desk, and and I wasn't able to see them, and I I told them you know get in touch with me, make an appointment, come in and see me. So I went up to the front, and they had a rubber foot, and on it it said just trying to get my foot in the door. Oh, and I thought that is the corniest, dumbest thing I've ever seen. But it's memorable. Oh. I'll, I'll book the appointment. I got, I got to know, I got to know the person who's leaving me rubber feet. Exactly. And by the way, my dog loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So market, our marketing here internally, like I said, um, the grinding almost has kind of like a retail feel, feel to it sure. because it's, um, it's very quick and, um, it quick is the best way to describe it. Our, Grinding machines can take two or three years for someone to make the decision to buy one. They start the process, they mm -hmm. want to talk to us, all of that. So 
we're at all spectrums of the marketing scheme here. Um, so we are, like I said, we're getting a handle on it all, yeah. blending okay. it all together. I'm so glad you brought that up because that was sort of the next thing is about the actual buying cycle for the different things that you do. Mm -hmm. I could imagine you've got equipment that the, the buying decision is two years. I imagine there's equipment mm -hmm. that we, we need it now. Exactly. It's broken. We need it. We need a new one. And there's then there's the service side. A good example for the Magnalock product line is like a new CNC machine. If a mm -hmm. company's adding um, a new CNC machine, they a lot of our customers will request Magnalock work holding on it. So in the process of starting their search for the machine, we work with several different companies, um, third parties to get the right work holding to put on their machine. Then the company that the end user buys it, and then we begin the process of manufacturing it. But that that's a long cycle. Um, but like I said, the grinding, someone can be, actually we have people that just drop parts off. Mm -hmm. And then we have people that will call, they need it done by the end of the day um, yeah. type thing. So, so. so the work holding part, that's really interesting what you just brought up. So you've got the work holding customer who's looking to replace on their old equipment. Mm -hmm. You've got the OEM where you're actually, you become part of what's specified in a machine that somebody else is building. Mm -hmm. You have them on machines that you make. Mm -hmm. is, are there other markets for, for the work holding part of the magnetic besides that? The repair part of okay of the work holding is, is la very large. We repair a lot of magnetic checks, which a lot of our customers don't realize. They'll mm -hmm. get a call every once in a while and they're like, I need a new one of these. And we're like, okay, are you getting a new machine? You know, what's going on? Well, no, it doesn't work. So I guess we have to get a new one. And we're like, no, we can actually repair it, which is um, a marketing plan that we're just now gonna implement in April of um, reducing and reducing waste and recycling and repairing mm -hmm. equipment because a lot of our equipment can just be used, can be repaired and used again. The whole, um, our chuck controls are a big, uh, that's a big selling point for, for our chuck controls because our, one of our competitors cycles out their models every one mm -hmm. to two years. And so a customer will buy that and then they call in a couple of years to get a replacement part. And they're like, you can't get a replacement part for that. You need to buy a new model. And we, That's you know, the huge, huge benefit to your exactly, product. exactly. So Great. we service what we sell and we carry spare parts, able to get things out, you know, right same day, a lot of times. Spare that's, parts. So that's, that's a huge, huge benefit that you should be shouting from the hilltops. That's how you get voracious advocates for your brand. You buy the yeah. other guys in a few years, you'll need a new one with us. You're going to exactly. have it for life because we can make that happen. That's yeah. it is another it, good selling point with our check controls is that when you open the box, you take them out and you install them. Mm -hmm. um, we have another competitor that doesn't sell the transformer with mm. the check control. So they have to buy that independently and then they have to put it together when they open the box and ours are not like that. So speed that's a, market. That's another. Yep. Yeah. You, yeah. You've really got some great benefits to, to be, to be sharing with, with the, with the yeah. customer base. Yes. That's that's really interesting. We have a lot of things to say about our products. So yeah. Do you do other, are you contemplating other types of, of sort of out of the box marketing, maybe even uh, creating uh, video video training on how to use magnetic chucks to educate the pop population? Um, I'm, there I, there's a little bit of risk management in that because uh, of the, the consumer or the operator machine operator that's going to not heed electrical warnings and sure. um that type of thing so i i have to be a little careful with that mm -hmm. um i would love to do some videos but i just have to be careful that we have all of our bases covered with those yeah. types of things because most people that use our products are aware of all of that and use caution sure. but sure. yeah get that but one it just seems to me that that in your market space with your family's expertise and the personal touch, there's probably a play to root to truly doing things with your marketing that that would convert the market into recognizing that if you want to talk to the thought leaders in Magnetic Chuck, these are the people you need to talk to. Even yeah. if you 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 might look and shop everywhere else, if you want the experts, you know that that sort of that sort of right. a positioning could be could be really huge for you. Not yeah. that this is not that this 
podcast was about <laughs> about yeah. about, about a, a work, not, it's not supposed to be a working meeting but it just kind of turned into <laughs> one um but yeah i uh i'm fascinated with with the interesting mix because it really when i first looked at it i was thinking well these are some interesting things i'm, I'm not sure how they all fit together but they really do and they and, do and that leads me to the the question about the actual brand obsidian can you okay. talk a little bit about about why this volcanic rock has become the the, the corner the corner stone of well there's a yeah exactly there's a um there is a personal story and then there is like factuals sure. um obsidian has been used for years and years like hundreds of years as a tool so mm -hmm. it started out in ancient times as a tool spears uh knives that type of thing and some people still do make um knives and and such out of that so it relates to our industries and it kind of gives a play on um well-established tools in the industry which what our brands are um, but then the personal story behind it all is that um, my kids, when they were small, were rock collectors. Cool. And um, on my dad's farm, my parents' farm, um, they would go for a stroll and collect rocks and everything. And the black glassy ones were always their favorite. So um, my kids were in 4-H growing up. And one year, one of our kids did a 4-H project for geology which is the study of rocks. And we took it to a local uh, museum. And um, this, uh, I don't even, I, maybe he was a geologist, I'm not sure. The expert there um, identified it as obsidian mm -hmm. and explained that it, um, he said, we have no volcanoes here. So it, we're in Northern Illinois. Um, and he said, they, the obsidian you're finding on your, your farm is, was moved here by the glaciers so we were like what <laughs> yeah. so then we went into that whole learning thing with our kids and and told them all that so it's just been something that has stuck with us and mm -hmm. when i was trying to find names um for the new company we had a small little list four or five but obsidian kept sticking out so i just like the color the black it's just neutral it's um sturdy yeah. Well established. And, yeah. I it's it's definitely a bedrock, you know, strong. I'm, there I know you go I, again. I know I'm playing the pun game, but I <laughs> I, I think it's a I think it's a brilliant uh base to 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 really understand well, thank you. how all those brands fit together. That's uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. So on that note, we're running out of time. Okay. So what what didn't I ask you about obsidian and, and the work that you do Ooh. that I should have? Oh, we talked a lot about marketing sales um i i can't really think of anything else off right. the top of my head i wasn't expecting that question so i'm like mm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm that good i asked everything yeah. check <laughs> us out on our websites our social media we're always looking to connect with yep. with other people and, in our and, industry and by the way we're going to put all of that in in the comments okay good so I, I'm so appreciative of you coming on today. This was really an, an interesting conversation. I'm I'm so pleased and happy that, that that you were willing to join us. I'm glad I could be here, and I appreciate you asking. Thanks. And for those of you listening in your hot tub or your on your I don't know where the heck you are walking on your treadmill, driving your car or or well whatever you're doing, we really appreciate you you checking out the Fangled Cast today. Uh, we'd really like you to subscribe. So if you get a chance, click click down below where the little subscribe button is and subscribe to the future ones. Let us know what you think in the comments and we will see you all again on the next FangleCast. Bye now. Brought to you by Fangle Technologies where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand.